Good morning, New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. Thank you once again for joining in with us on today. I had the most wonderful time on yesterday. People took time out of their busy schedules to come and celebrate a milestone in my life. You see, on June 15, 60 years ago, the Lord saw fit to give me life. Yes, tomorrow is my 60th birthday, and I am so glad that the Lord has left me here on this earth to see another birthday. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I would be. You see, he kept my enemies away. He let the sun shine through a cloudy day. He rocked me in the cradle of his arms when he knew I had been battered and spawned. Thank God for loving me and keeping me. Our scripture for today is Psalm 124, and it reads, what if the Lord had not been on our side? Let all Israel repeat. What if the Lord had not been on our side when people attacked us? They would have swallowed us alive in their burning anger. The waters would have engulfed us. A torrent would have overwhelmed us. Yes, the raging waters of their fury would have overwhelmed our very lives. Praise the Lord who did not let our teeth, who did not let their teeth tear us apart. We escaped like a bird from a hunter's trap. The trap is broken and we are free. Our help is from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Help me sing if it had not been for the Lord on my side. <clears throat> if it had not
Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. God, we thank you for another privilege, another honor, another great opportunity to come before you. Lord, we thank you for another successful day where you blessed us to wake up again, where you blessed us, Father God, to come to your house of worship, your house of prayer. We thank you, Father God, for blessing conditions to be as well as they are. We thank you, Father, for allowing us, Father God, to come today to study your holy word. We ask you to bless us today, Father God, as we dive into your word, that your word will be real to us, that your word will bless us, and that your word will go forward in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask you to keep the glory, all the honor and all the praise, allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. So in the strong, mighty, powerful, and anointed name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we ask it all. Amen. And thank God. Where would I be? Where would I be? Where would I be? Where would I be? Amen. Thank the Lord again for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity to come to honor him and worship service again. Why don't you thank God for just being good and being God, for being a blessing again to us and to our lives and allowing our lives to roll on just a little while longer. He has given us another privilege, and I'm glad about it, and I'm thankful for it. God has given us another privilege. Let's look at God's word. We'll be looking at Psalm number 124, the book of Psalms, Psalm number 124. It's where we are today. The book of Psalm, Psalm number 124 is where we are today. We will be looking at the book of Psalm. Psalm number 124 is where we are today. So we want to thank God for the privilege of your, those of you who are joining by way of Facebook Live and those of you who are joining uh, by way of Zoom. Thank you again for joining us. The book is Psalms. Psalm is, is the book of Psalms is written in numbers, not in chapters. It's the number of Psalms. So the number of Psalm is 124. We'll be reading this entire verse. Thanks, Sister Davis, for having the wisdom and knowledge to start us off with this psalm and song this morning. So we'll be looking at Psalms, Psalm number 124. Amen. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, the New King James Version. And when you found it, you will discover these words. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us up alive. When their wrath was kindled against us, then the waters would have overwhelmed us. The stream would have gone over our soul. Then the, swallowed water, the swollen waters would have gone over our soul. Bless the Lord, who has not given us as prey to their teeth. Our soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken, and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I want to talk about the name of the Lord is our help. The name of the Lord is our help. As we look at the daily layout of our landscape, as we look at the culture that we find ourselves in, Cells mixed up in today, we understand by now that it's going to be the name of the Lord that pulls us out. We understand that the Lord has to produce a vaccine. We understand that life as we once knew it will never be again. We know that we have enemies on every side. Paul admonishes us and tells us on a regular basis that this enemy is not a flesh and blood enemy. Mm -hmm. It is an 
enemy that we have in high places. It is an enemy that's all around us that is in the higher epsilon that we don't know about. It is a spiritual warfare that's going on all around us. We are fighting a pandemic on one hand, and then we're fighting the enemy of racism on another hand. Mm -hmm. We are reminded oftentimes of the 1950s and 60s, where we're still calling the role of those who have been thoroughly victimized, even to death, in the midst of this racist, this racist society. We need to understand that it's going to take the Lord and the Lord alone to pull us out. Yes, you see, God has a reputation. He has, he has a history. He has a long resume of pulling folk, especially his, out of trouble. The Bible teaches here today, as we look in Psalm number 124, we find this congregational hymn, if you will, that the Israelites would sing as they marched to and from Jerusalem. David is the author here, and David is letting us know out of all the things he's been through, if it had not been for the Lord on his side, he would not know what he would do or where he would be. That is the testimony of every saint today. Every born-again believer knows. Every born-again believer understands. If it had not been for the Lord, we would not be where we are. We would not be who we are. And we would not be what we are if it had not been from the Lord. You may not drive what you want to drive. You may not live where you want to live. But wherever you are, God has brought you to this point in your life. Yes. The psalmist puts forth to the people and he tells the people, come on Israel, come on, join me in this song as we glorify God. Mm -hmm. We as the psalmist must get to a point in our lives where we don't really want to ask God for anything. We want to thank God for everything. Yes. We have to get to a point in our lives where we look back over the shoulders of our lives and come to the conclusion that God and God alone has brought us. As we fight wars, as we march, as we protest, these things we must do. But what we need to understand really, really well, as we continue to march, as we continue to protest, as we continue to be peaceful people and stand up for our human rights, mm -hmm. we must give God the credit for bringing us yes. this far. Mm -hmm. The psalmist says, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, and he tells Israel, come on, join in with us. Yes. This is the anthem of every nation. This is the anthem of Israel, and we have to get to a point where we realize if it had not been for the Lord on our side, devastating things, more devastating than have already happened, would have happened to us over and over again. Mm -hmm. In verse number two, he repeats this thought. He says, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, when men rose against us, devastation would have taken place. Yeah, you may have men rising against you every day. But God, when you have God on your side, mm -hmm. he's able to overwhelm them. Yes. He's able to defeat them. You need to call on the Lord. When we can't gather at church as we used to, yes. we need to call on the Lord. When we can't get to see each other as we used to, Somebody is missing a hug from their brother and sister at the church right now. Yes, sir. But I want to say to you today, cling to the Lord. Yes, the psalmist admonishes us that we need to glorify him and give him the credit for what he has already done.
My first point to you today is we must acknowledge the power of God. There is nobody who has or who will ever possess the power as God possesses the power. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, when men rose against us, then they would have swallowed us up alive. Then the waters would have overtaken us. Then their wrath would have kindled against us. Let's look at verse number three. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, then our enemies would have swallowed us up alive. I know men are being killed in the street. I realize that women are being killed in their homes. But if it had not been for the Lord on our side, they would have swallowed us up. They would have swallowed us up alive. They would have buried us alive. They would have killed us. And he, he shows forth this imagery of him that a raving, ravishing beast would have overwhelmed us. He paints, a, he paints a picture of these men that come upon us. He paints a picture of these men who rose up against us, swallowing us alive. It paints the image of a wild animal that catches you out alone and, and eat up your flesh and swallows you alive. He paints the picture of a snake that's able to swallow a whole hog. He paints the picture of a raving, ravishing wolf that's able to swallow a whole baby. He says, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, then these men would have rose against us. Then they would have swallowed us alive. When their wrath was kindled against us, when their devastation would have come against us, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, let me just tell you, they would have taken us down even while we were alive. Mm -hmm. So my first point is, it's because of the power of God that we are where we are. It's because of the power of God that we, we are doing what we have been called to do. It is, called, it is because of the power of God that we still are able to maintain our livelihood and substand, subtain what we have, have in, in the midst of. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, we would have been eaten up alive. We, when the wrath came against us, we would not have been able to stand. And then verse number two, he gives us, not only does he give us God's power, in verse number four, he shows forth God's protection. God is able to protect us. God is able to keep us. Yeah, he gives us God's power in that God is able to keep us when our enemies come like raving wolves, like ravishing wolves. God is able to keep us from our enemies. I want to remind you tonight, today and all last night, it was not ADT that kept you. It wasn't central security that kept you. And certainly it wasn't your cameras around your building that kept you. Yes. The Bible teaches that all night and all day, the songwriter would say, the angels of the Lord kept watching over me, my Lord. So not only was it his power, it was also his protection. Look at verse number four and five. It says, then the waters would have overwhelmed us. The stream would have gone over our soul. Then the swollen waters would have gone over our souls. This word souls here mean our very own selves. This word soul means our very own life. Our lives are not in our hands. Our lives are in the hand of God. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 not, it's not the insurance company hands that we ought to put our lives in. Our lives should be in the hands of almighty, almighty God. Verse 4, it says that the, the water would have overwhelmed us. Verse 5 declares not only would the stream would have gone over our souls, but verse 5 says it would have, this swollen water would have drowned us. Mm -hmm. 
It would have taken our lives. It would have taken our very soul. It would have taken our very own selves if it had not been for the Lord. So God has our power, his power that takes care of us. He has his protection that takes care of us. And let me just share, it's not your degree on the wall that keeps you. It's not how smart you are that keeps you. It's only the protection of God that's able to keep us. And then he goes on in verse number six, seven, and eight. And he says, Best, bless, bless be to God. We ought to praise God for who he is and yes. praise God for what he's already done. If he doesn't do anything else for us, if he doesn't do anything else for us, he has done enough. Amen. He says, blessed be the, the Lord, blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord who has not given us up as prey. He has not given us up as victims. Yes. He has not given us up as food. He has not given us up as the spawn. He, he has not given us up as the meat. We have not become prey to their teeth. Mm -hmm. He paints a picture again here of a way of a, of a, a vict, victim being victimized by an associate, a victim being victimized by a wild animal, one that will come upon you and eat up your flesh. David says in another psalm that when my enemies come upon me to eat up my flesh, God causes them to stumble and fall. Though a, hep, though a host encamp around me and against me, God protects me one and all. God is able to protect us. God gives us his power for protecting us. And finally, I want to say to you this morning, God's preservation keeps us. He preserves us. It is his preservation and his preservation alone. The psalmist gets happy here in verse number six. He gets happy. He says, blessed is the Lord. Not only is he saying that God is blessed, but he's saying that God has also blessed us. And because God has blessed us and because his name is blessed, we ought to bless him. Yes. We ought to find ourselves in the midst of all that's going on around us. We ought to bless the name of the Lord. We ought to celebrate God daily. We ought to rejoice with God daily and rejoice for God daily. Let me tell you, we at the crest right now. We at the peak right now yes. where you will be determined by men and women and by your faith whether you really trust God. This is a determining season. Those who really has the Lord on their side, they will walk with him today. They will stay with him today. But those who don't have the Lord on their side, they're going to fall in the midst of it. God will preserve those who are righteous. God will preserve those who walk with him. He has given his preservation just for you. Verse number six, it says, bless the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. Verse number seven says, our soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the, of the fowler. Let me tell you, bird here paints the picture of one that is innocent, one who is not guilty, one who has no hope. One who he doesn't even know he's in danger. The Bible declares here, in the midst of God's preservation, he protect those who, who do not have the ability to protect themselves. A bird is a symbol of one who can't fight back. A bird is one, it's a symbol of one that you can hold in your hand and cuddle. A bird is one that doesn't have a sting that can warrant you off. The only thing about a bird is that he flies away to be at rest. Mm -hmm. The Bible says our soul has escaped as the bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken. God will preserve you so much so until the trap will be broken. Yes. This word snare is the trap. This word snare is the trap that holds us bound. 
Right now, racism may hold you bound, but I want to say that God is able to overcome it. If you trust in him, if you focus on him, if you keep him first in your life, God can break the snare of the devil. Yes. And we will escape. We have escaped. Those of us who have walked with the Lord know that God has caused us to escape. God has caused us. Mm -hmm. Even when we were wrong, God has preserved us. I just want to testify this morning and let you know, I haven't always been right. Mm -hmm. I haven't always done things the right way. But my God, my God has blessed me and preserved me yes. when I did not really, really deserve it. When I was wrong, he kept me. When I was in court, he kept me. When I was sick, he kept me. Yeah. When I was going the wrong way, climbing up fool's hill, God and God alone has kept me. He's kept me. He's kept me. He's kept me. In the midst of being kept, he's kept me. He, he has preserved me. Yes. His word preserved not only means that he keeps you, but he means that he keeps you from now on because he's the self-existing God. Verse number eight, and I'll leave you alone. He says, Psalm 124, verse number eight, he says, our help is in the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Don't pass over the word name. Because when he says that it's in the, in the name of the Lord, it's talking about God's reputation. It's talking about the reputation that God has, has for a long time had. God still has a reputation of pulling us out. God still has a reputation of walking with us when it looked like we're losing the battle. Yes. God still has a reputation. Don't pass over the word name. This word name in the original Hebrew means God's reputation. Thank God for his reputation. Thank God for his character. Thank God that he's put his, his reputation online. He's put his reputation on the line. He's put his reputation before all of us. And he says, I've done it before and I'll do it again. Amen. Justice will roll down like a mighty stream. He says, our help is in the name of the Lord. Our help is in the reputation of the Lord. And the Lord has put his reputation right before us. The Lord has put his reputation right before us and said, I've done it before. And if you trust me, I'll do it again. There may be somebody listening to me today that can testify that God brought me through when I was sick. Yes. When I was sick as I could be, God picked me up. Yes. God has made a way out of no way. He's the doctor in a sick room that's never lost a patient. Thank God for who he is and how he's blessed me. Amen. Somebody can testify this morning that when they tried to do me wrong on my job, and they kept passing over me and kept passing over me for promotion. God was able to reserve, preserve me and reserve me for another position. And in that position, I make more money. The benefits are better. I have more time off. I have more time to, to meet with my family members and to do the great things that we do together. God has a reputation yes. of pulling us out. Amen. Somebody can testify today. And admit before a dying world that I was on my way to hell. I was on my way to hell. And, and I was too mean to die and wasn't fit to live. But God's reputation came forth. And, and he rescued me from a dying hell. He blessed me in spite of me. Not because of who I was. Not because of my name. But because of his name. And his reputation was at stake. Finally it says... Our help is in the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Not only is our help in the name of the Lord, our help is the Lord. Mm -hmm. The Lord is our help. Mm -hmm. When you look at your text, you will find out that the Lord is in all capital letters. This says that the Lord himself is a self-existing God. 
This says to us today that the Lord himself is a God who was not created. He's not a God that any man developed in a laboratory. He is God himself. Yes. He always was God. He always will be God. He is God even right now. And I thank God for who he is. The God that we're talking about today, he is, he is Jehovah God. He is the proper leader. He is the maker. The psalmist declares, I'm talking about the God who is the maker of heaven and earth. He says that I'm talking about the God who, who stepped out on nothing in the midst of nowhere. In darkness, when the earth was null and void and it was not in existence, God stepped out. Yes. And he said, let there be light. And light came skipping and jumping throughout the universe and there was light. I'm talking about that God. It is the Lord God. It is the Lord God who scooped down into the dust of the earth. It wasn't even good dirt. He scooped down into the dust of the earth and created man and blew into his nostrils and man became a living soul. I'm talking about that God. I'm talking about the God who, who goes everywhere at the same time. He, he is the omnipresent God. He is a God that everywhere he goes, he bumps into himself. If he's going north, he bumps into himself in the south. If he's going west, he bumps into himself in the east. He is the omnipresent God. I'm talking about the God who's the omniscient God, mm -hmm. the omniscience God. He, he is the all-knowing God. He knows everything. He sees everything. He's, he's the all-seeing God. He, he sees what you're going to do before you do it. He hears what, you, what you're going to say before you say it. Mm -hmm. He is the almighty God. And he is the omnipotent God. He is the all-powerful God. He, he is a God that's able to do anything. He does anything. And, and let me just share with you, we need to keep praying for the president of the United States because the God that we serve, he has the heart of the king. He has the heart of the king in his hand. And, and the Bible says that he turns the heart of the king like many rivers, every which way he wants to because he is the omnipresent omnipotent, all-knowing God. Not only that, he is the sovereign God. Mm -hmm. He is the sovereign God. He does what he wants to do, when he wants to do it, any way he wants to go, do it. And let me tell you, we've gotten to a point where we're tired. Mm -hmm. And Fannie Lou Hamer said, not only are we tired, we are sick and tired. Let me tell you, it's not enough for us to get sick and tired. But just wait just a little while longer. When God gets sick and tired, whenever God gets sick and tired, God is going to speak. And when God speaks, no man can deny that it is God who is speaking. And when God speaks, he's going to speak with great power. He's going to speak with great authority. And when God speaks, mankind will have to listen. I told you on last Bible study, I told you that every knee going to bow. Every tongue going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And when he bows and when he confess, no other king, no other man, no other God is going to get the credit. But Jesus the Christ, he is. He is Lord. Amen. God has placed his reputation on trial. He said, call unto me, for I'm your helper mm -hmm. in time of trouble. We're in trouble now. We're falling short now. We're not. We're missing the mark now. Men are dying in the street every day now. We need to understand that we got to call on God because God's reputation is on the line. And because his reputation is on the line, he's going to speak one day. And whenever he speaks, the whole world is going to hear from God. I remember the Israelites says that one of these days, I'm sick and tired. I'm talking to you, Moses. Moses, we don't want to talk to God anymore. We, we want to hear from God for ourselves. We don't want you to talk to God for us. We don't want to talk to God through you. We don't want God to talk to us through you. We want to talk to God for ourselves. The Bible says, when God got sick and tired of their shenanigans, lightning struck, <laughs> thunder rolled, 
storms broke out. <laughs> and then the Lord opened up the earth and, and swallowed a few of them up and closed the earth up again. When God spoke, men didn't want to hear from God then. I want to tell you in the 21st century, one of these days God going to speak. And when God speak, the same men who are doing their shenanigans today, the same men that are, that are oppressing others today, they will hear from God and we will see the victory that God will give us. Hang on in there. <laughs> don't, don't wait too long. Just hang on in there. Yes. Trust in the Lord. Stay righteous and stay with the Lord. One of these days is going to pay off after a while. Serving the Lord will pay off after a while. Yes. Yeah, Jesus made sure that we were not giving a bill that was bankrupt. Yes, the United States have given the African-American man a promissory note that they have never fulfilled. But one of these days, God is going to pay, and we'll be able to turn our cross in for a crown. There's evidence that we can turn our cross in for a crown over 2,000 years ago. Jesus Christ died on the cross. Jesus Christ, mean men nailed him tight. Mean men nailed his hand. Mean men ribbed his feet. They raised him high. They dropped him low. He died on Calvary. Yes, he did. He died on Calvary's cross that day. He was dying for you and dying for me. They laid him in a borrowed tomb. It was a borrowed tomb because it didn't need it too long. For early that third day morning, early that third day morning, early that third day morning, he got up with all power and heaven and earth in his hand. Amen. My Lord, my God, died for you and he died for me. He got up with all power and heaven and earth in his hand. And that same Jesus is going to make a difference, a visible difference one day when it looked like waters are swallowing us up when it looked like the swollen waters are overtaking us, when it looked like the enemy is doing things that we can't live with, when it looks like the enemy is succeeding in eating us up alive, one of these days, the text declares, if it had not been for the Lord, they would have eaten us up. If it had not been for the Lord, he would not have pulled us from the snare of his teeth. But God will pull us out and God will make a difference. He did it but with Jesus. They laid him in a barber tomb early that third day morning. He got up with all power yeah. in heaven and earth in his hand. If you're listening to me today and you've never received Jesus as your personal savior, this is your moment. This is your opportunity. The door of the church is open. You need to trust Jesus and get to know him. Get to know Jesus for yourself. He needs you to be with him in heaven. The Bible says the God that we're talking about, the Lord that we're talking about, he is the one who made heaven and he made earth. If he made heaven and he made earth, that's the God that I want to be with. If you haven't received him as your personal savior, this is your moment today. Get to know him. You can get to know him by trusting the story that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on Calvary. He died, and they laid him in a borrowed tomb. Early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. You ought to get to know Jesus today. The door is open. The invitation is extended. If you can believe this story, you can get to know him right now. Right today, you can get to know Jesus. Just repeat after me this simple prayer. And it will go kind of like this. Lord, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. And I believe that you rose from the dead. Come into my life and make me a new person. And we believe that you pray that prayer of all honesty. You can be saved. You will be saved. And you will reserve a spot in heaven. God has offered us his power. You'll be able to see his power on display. He has offered us his protection. You'll be able to see his protection in action. Yes. And he's offered us his preservation. He will preserve you and he will keep you. Will you join me in prayer and in inviting Christ into your life to be your savior? Just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. 
I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose again. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe if you honestly played this prayer believing the story of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, we believe that you're born again. And the next thing you have to do is get involved in a Bible teaching church. I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the center of attention, where Jesus is the main attraction, where Jesus is the captain of the ship. You ought to get to know him today. And you need to be a part of a home, a church home. If you want to get to know him in a very real way and grow in Christ, offer the New Beginning Church as a church home to you. You can get to know him just as you are. If you want to join our church, you can do so by messaging me and I, I correspond with you and you can become a full-fledged member of the New Beginning Church. And we'll welcome you to the church. You can even join online today. We look forward to hearing from you. And if you've received Christ as your Savior during this broadcast, we look forward to hearing you, hearing from you. So message us and let us know that, that you've been a part of this service. Let us know that you've enjoyed this service. And let us know that you want to be a member of the New Beginning Church. Thank you for, for joining us, doing our message, our song, and our prayer. Now it's offering time. It's time for us to give to the Lord. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It's time for us to give to the Lord. You can do so by joining us uh, by our cash app. You can join us by way of our cash app. Our cash tag is NBC Souls. Cash tag NBC Souls. You can join us by the cash tag NBC Souls. Dollar sign NBC Souls. Dollar sign NBC Souls. You can give by way of cash app. Also, you can give by way of post office mail. You can mail your gifts to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. You can mail your offering, your tithes, your offering, your sacrificial gifts, your offerings as a member or a non-member to New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77. Four five nine. You can join us in celebrating Christ and, and giving to the kingdom of God. You can join us by doing so. Also, we want to thank you for joining us by way of Bible study on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Thank you for joining us Sunday morning, Sunday school at 9 a.m. every Sunday. And also this worship service, 1045 a.m. every Sunday morning. Also, you can join us, as some of you have been, you can join us on Wednesday night at 7.20 p.m. for our Bible study. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for being a part of this service. And thank you so much for allowing us to speak into your life this morning. Please continue to pray for the state of our world, conditions of our situation, conditions of our, our nation. Continue to pray for our president, our Congress. Pray for your pastor. Pray that pastors give in to wisdom as we seek to look for a day. Pray for those churches that have reopened already. Pray for them. Pray for those who are having funeral services. Pray and lift them before the Lord. You think it was a tough decision for pastors to say that there will be no more church. It's an even tougher decision for pastors to determine when to go back to church. 
So pray for wisdom, pray for knowledge, pray for understanding. Lift up your pastor. And if you don't have a pastor, you need one. Every person needs a pastor. Someone to shepherd them, someone to feed them, someone to speak into their lives. You need a pastor. Thank you for joining us again. Thank you for joining us. And we continue to offer you New Beginning Church as a place of worship. Look forward to seeing you on Wednesday night at 7.20 p.m. Look forward to being a part and speaking into your life. And you continue to pray for me and I continue to pray for you. Remember that the Lord in his name is our helper. The Lord is our helper. He is the one with the power. He is the one with protection. And he's the one with preservation. He alone can and will keep us. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you that you are our power. You're the source of our power. You're the one who gives us power. And you're the one who keeps us through your power. We thank you, Lord, that you, Lord, alone is our protection. You protect us, keep us, and wrap your arms around us. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are our preservation. You're the only one who can preserve us. You're the one who's constantly keeping us. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him, the only true and only wise God. Unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. And the church said, amen. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12, 32. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.